Welcome to Closest Club 11, JD. How are we doing? Doing well. How are you doing? We're doing good. Let's get into this thing. Let me see. At least next slide. Let me see a picture of yourself. Well, at least you're not the chat GPT person, as Jake likes to say. <laughs> All right. There I am. Uh, just chilling out right there. It's what I look like right now as well, trying to make sure this is all working. So um, I'm ready to go. I am excited to be here. And I do appreciate you guys giving me the opportunity to come on here and talk about this deal. So um, I also want to say thank you to Scott and, and Dylan, because if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't even have joined the group because, you know, both of them really motivated me and, and you know, they gave me a lot of uh, good advice about you guys and, and what was going to happen here. So I appreciate them as well. Thank so. you. All right. So let me go ahead and hop right into this because I'm not sure how long this screen is going to last. So uh, some of the things that Jake and Gino have helped me out with, you know, I was talking to you earlier, Gino, the underwriting and the syndications, but the cost segregation was something that really caught me off guard because the very first time I talked to Scott, he asked me if I had been doing, you know, cost segregation. And I was like, oh, yeah, I've been depreciating things, you know, doing doing fine. And thought I knew what I was talking about. I really didn't have any idea what I was talking about at that point in time. So uh, as far as the underwriting, I was writing things down on notepads and and just doing the best that I could. And. You know, since I've started using some of the tools that you guys have provided, that's helped out quite a bit. Not taking me hours to write things out. Um, and then the syndications. You know, I have never done a syndication, so I'm not going to pretend to have, but I've definitely learned how to do it at this point. So I, I feel confident at some point I'm going to try to do one. Right. Um, it's a tool in the tool belt, JD. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well you know i was honestly i was kind of against it there for a while but you guys have convinced me so at some point i'm going to try to do that and a jv to make sure you know to try out all of those tools uh i've also i will also say that you've been very motivational and you've kept my confidence up that has uh that has definitely helped keep me going you know as the market's gotten a lot more difficult um and you know we'll get into the re refinance here in a few minutes but I had I really didn't believe in doing the refinance. I had kind of always thought I would just, you know, buy it, renovate it, and sell it, and and make money that way. But uh, this last deal, I went ahead and refinanced it to see how that was, you know, to make sure it was going to, to make sure I could keep moving forward and use some of the other tools that you guys have provided me. And let me share a story with everybody. I was in Italy on vacation around three weeks ago. It was like August 27th. And I get a phone call. Actually, I get an email from JD and he's talking about doing the refi and he's really pissed that the appraisal came in terribly. I said, give me a call. He says, where are you? I said, I'm in Italy. I'm six hours ahead of you. I'll call you at 10 o'clock there. And then you pick up. So it was 10 o'clock. I'm walking in my mom's town, Jake. It was so surreal. It was just an amazing phone call. I'm surprised call. you got service. <laughs> I am too. I mean, hey, the Lord let it happen. Let it make happen. I, I try to call Gino in Italy. It never goes through. I don't know. JD gets him. All right. Fair enough. I, he got me. And we're, we're walking through the deal. We're talking. And it's just like the, the appraiser came in at a crappy appraisal. It sounded like JD was a little deflated. All I did was tell him, just go back. Go back to the appraiser. Go back with the information. This is not an ACAP market. Push back on the valuations. And lo and behold, Week later, he's like, I got the valuation. I got the thing to go. So for me, it's so important when the student needs something. That's what the community is all about. We're there to help students get these deals over the finish line. And this is the accountability. You know, JD, I don't know. He may have just said, I'm going to pack it in. But I'm so thankful that I got that phone call to be able to, you know, change not only your life, but show you that one small little deal. It only takes one. We just saw a 23 unit deal. Now, Jake, this deal, I, this one is reminiscent of our very first deal. I think it's, you're going to see the numbers on this one. You're you know, see. This is a lot nicer than our first deal. And I will say this, this is the first for Closers Club, folks. This is the first build to rent that we've had on Closers Club. So I'm excited about this one. Let's, let's, let's jump into this, Jake. You talk about the problems you had on this property. Talk about the story of how you found the deal. And then obviously Jake's going to see some of these properties and he's going to go, well, it's not as nice as our first property. So it looks that picture is <laughs> nice, but let's dive into this thing. <laughs> so, so yeah, I had, I, I originally had the 17 unit under contract by itself for $765,000. 
Uh, but when we started looking at it, there was water in all of the units and mold. And I mean, it was it was a complete mess. So it was really falling apart. And I told him that, you know, we're just not going to make a deal here. And so I walked away from this deal to start with. Uh, and then, you know, I went back and, and talked to the broker and was like, you know, I'll come in at 300 K for this apartment complex. Well, the, they had, they had, they had it on a note. So there was no way they could do 300 K. So I was like, well, what's on the note. And it ended up having some houses in this quadplex. And I was like, all right, well, I'll give you 765 for the entire note. And uh, we kind of went back and forth and waited about I don't know, a week or two and they called back and at tax value all of these houses fell into that range when you added it all up it was right at about 700 800k so he was like yeah let's go ahead and make the deal so got it under contract um was there was it was it was a disaster i can't, I can't even express how bad it was uh but let me get to this was the very first thing that we had to work on. So we had, you know, the pipes were completely full. The water was running over the pipes. There was no drainage whatsoever. So we had to go in and it was a hundred, 117,000 just to take care of this pipe issue and, you know, start working nice. on that. Yeah. hundred. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They, they pulled the entire thing. Up what happened? It was, so well, I'm having a little bit of a lag, y'all, but but uh, it was just completely full. The water wasn't draining at all. And the as the water would come down off of the road, you can't really see it in this picture, but as the water would come down off of the road, it would not drain. It would just go straight into the units. Oh. And then it was going down into the bottom units in the back. So it was filling those up with water, filling the front part up with water. And um, yeah, that was, that was the very first fix. So... Fix that. That solved the majority of the water issue. We still had a few issues after that, um, and we had to go back in and go ahead and remediate the mold and you know and and all of that sort of stuff. This is this is what it looked like inside of the units. Every single unit looked exactly like this. Now people were living in some of these as well. Uh, we had there were probably I think five total units that had that had tenants. Uh, when they first gave us the rent roll, they said there were like 11 that had tenants in it. The rents were at $450 a piece. And I mean, even the property manager that was managing this was living in one of these units. So they, uh, <laughs> yeah, they were. They don't seem was, to be doing their chores on a regular quite, basis, to say the least. <laughs> yeah, it was quite the mess. And uh, the property manager was just kind of collecting you know, collecting the cash and they, yeah, we feel like they were stealing quite a bit of the money. So let me try to go back here. All right. So when we first, my, my initial estimates, you know, was that I was going to go in and put about $527,000 into this. And that was, that was kind of taking each of the units considering I was, can't remember exactly how much I was estimating per unit, but it was, I was thinking around 22, 23 per unit. I knew I was going to have to replace the roof. I also knew I was going to have to replace the gutters. Um, but I really didn't understand how big the water and mold damage was, you know, how much that was going to cost. Uh, we'll get to some of those numbers in a few minutes, but. But JD, as, what, you, what, you, what you did though really well was you bought it right. Cause you've got an asset with 17 units. It had those houses and the quadplex all for $765,000, $760,000. Your renovation costs are another five hundred, dollars so you're buying the asset properly. And I'm looking at the, the debt. It looks like really good debt, 80% LTV, 20-year AM, 4.9%. So you've got those two, and it seems as if you're executing the manage right at portion all at the same time. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. That's correct. And the very first thing I did was – I, all but three of the tenants, uh, we, you know, we had to move out. It was, I mean, it was a disaster. There was mold, like oh. the bathrooms were covered in mold. The, the, the entire place was really filled with mold. It was, it was awful. So I don't know how they were even living there to be quite honest about it. Doesn't it doesn't sound like a healthy situation. Yeah, for sure. It, it was not. And, and, you know, as, as it kind of, 
as the weeks went on, it was, I was honestly worried about how I was going to handle it as well. You know, like if, if somebody started making some phone calls, you know, if, if they were getting mold, I was like, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I don't know what I'm going to do in that situation. Cause I was trying to get through this as quickly as possible. And the, the general contractor that was working on this, he was, you know, he was doing a great job. He was managing it well and getting people in and out of there. He was, he was really pushing through it for me. So that, that helped out quite a bit as well. Awesome. Next slide. What's on the next slide? Are we going to be talking about the refi or are you going to show, got some more pictures? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, this is, this is after the renovation. This is what each unit looks like now. Um, it's a different like world, I said, man. Oh yeah, totally different world. And we, you know, we went from having three people in there that was to, to having a full complex of 17, you know, full 17 units. Uh, the rents are around 950. So the rents a little more than doubled uh, when it was all said and done. And people were, you know, people were actually happy moving in there. They, they were, um, we were getting phone calls from the police department talking about how the area had changed and how the, you know, how they didn't have to worry about getting phone calls out there anymore. So, you know, that, that made everybody feel pretty good about it. Well, and it's, a, it's not um, only, not only it sounds like a safe environment from that perspective, but the plumbing's working, there's no mold. I mean, you're really changing this community for the better. It's, this is fantastic work. And let's take into oh, consideration, yeah. once, once again, the size of the deal. Everyone talks about how the deal is. You got to get really big deals. Take a look at that net equity profit on that deal. All in cost of $1.6 million total post value. I mean, that is that is phenomenal. What market is this in, JD? There's someone asked that question. This was in Winston-Salem area. Winston-Salem. Excellent. Yeah. You want to dive yeah. into these numbers a little bit more and discuss what you're doing with the houses and with the refinance as well? Yeah. So, so what I wanted to do, I really didn't care about having the houses, but let me go back to the way that we set up the, you know, the, the way we worked out the loan. So when I went to the bank, I had a relationship with the bank already. So I, I think it was Vince that was talking about doing what I think what he called it was the wedge method. Um, so I hadn't even heard of that method before, but in his scenario, you know, he used all of the, he used the houses and did the to cost and basically had no money out of his pocket. Mm -hmm. The difference that I had was that I had the complex and one house put onto the loan and for the houses and the quadplex, I kept off the loan. So I had no debt on those houses. So I knew I could sell them. Uh, and that was part of the whole negotiation with the bank. I wanted to make sure, you know, that I could, push forward with that. And once, once I had that in place, I knew that if I needed any extra cash, I mean, I had some from selling a mobile home park before, but I knew if I needed some cash, I could just sell one of these houses and jump in and, uh, you know, go ahead and go ahead and make that happen. Uh, do y'all, do y'all still hear me? Yeah. You yeah. Great. Yes. Yeah, and, and okay, you're, okay. you're talking right. about the wedge <laughs> method. You know, Vince sure. Gethings is our coach. Vince uh, talks about right. Vince talks about the, the the wedge method and what you're talking about there is you're basically using the equity from the homes. What Jay did, what JD did was he's got those homes are all free and clear and they're starting to sell those homes. And some of those homes are being sold for like $200,000 per home right now. Now he's got the 17 unit under its own loan. He's refinanced a ton of that money out. He's put that money back up. So uh, it's, it's, uh, it's really, really an awesome Awesome, awesome deal. Uh, I know that JD, if you're still on, how much did you actually end up refinancing out of this thing? Was it over a million dollars on this loan on this deal? Yeah, yeah. So what I can you all still hear me now? Yeah. Sorry. Yep. So okay. So yeah, I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna go ahead and just talk this out. So so what I ended up doing, I I combined this with just the 17 unit and the 11 unit that I had from a, from a previous deal and I refinanced those. Uh, and then with that, I pulled out about a million dollars and then I sold each one of these houses and it put me at about 2 million liquid at the end of all of this. So um, each one of the houses averaged about 200, maybe a little more than that per, per house. Uh, I've got two more to sell one. I'm actually closing on tomorrow. The other one is right now it's worth 300, about 340, $350,000. And I'm going to be, 
I'm going to be selling it over the next, probably next two months is, is what I'm guessing. And then I'm going to, you know, um, basically as I'm, as I'm thinking about what I'm going to do moving forward, I'm going to be taking this cash and uh, looking for, looking to go into a JV or another individual deal and purchase like a 32 to 64 unit uh, with nice. that, with that cash. And yeah. So I've also been flipping some houses with some, you know, some other members on Jake and Gino or, or at least we're talking about it. I've already got a couple that I'm flipping and uh, yeah, that's, that's where I'm at, man. I'm generate, sorry. It's generate the cash to put in the deal, room. man. Now you're great. Yeah, yeah. If you could do me, do me a favor in the chat box, if you could just type in your, your email address, type in your website, if you want to leave your phone number, throw it in the chat box. So at least if anybody has any questions on the deal, if they're looking to JV with you, if they're looking to partner with you, I think that'd be a, a really, really smart thing for anybody to do, to reach, to reach, you know, to reach out to you and I even ask you questions about the deal, about that wedge method that you're using or just how you created the equity or how you're actually refining these deals, how you created that relationship with the bank. There's so many questions I think that you can you can absolutely go out there and, and ask. Oh, great. Look, J.D. Allen at BMPApartmentInvestments.com. There's his phone number, his website. So for everybody on here, make sure that you reach out to J.D. because it's, it's one thing when you join the community. Here's another student who's put in a ton of work he was in in uh, in January in New York City at the Ryan Surahan Mastermind. He was there. I've seen him at multiple Jake and Gino events, internal boot camp events. I've seen him on Money Mixers. I've seen him on every lesson on Monday. He's on all those Monday lessons. He's putting in the work. And when you put in the work, you end up sooner or later, the results will show. And I think just that little bit of a mindset shift and check him out on LinkedIn because he's putting a lot, posting a lot of ton of content on LinkedIn, pushing himself out of his comfort zone. And that's what I like about it. He's continually growing. So I just want to thank you uh, for being on here, JD, and for, for sharing your story. Great, great deal, brother. All right. Thank you all so much.